let's talk about the sun. Uh, once again, I've used a styrofoam ball and just painted it with some oranges and some yellows. It's a fun little manipulative I use to demonstrate things and just to have a visual. A few of the things I like to start with whenever I talk about the sun is the fact that, number one, it is a star. That actually is a question that I've had before. Is the sun a star? Yeah, so when you look at the stars at night, really what you're looking at are distant suns. The sun is a star, stars are suns. Our sun, our star, that hosts our solar system is an absolute beast, really. It, even though it's quite a small star, by comparison, it's actually classified as a red dwarf. But despite that name, it's 1.4 million kilometers in diameter. Uh, it has a mass of a million, 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 million kilograms. So this is an incredible size. And it's so powerful that even though it's 150 million kilometers away, now think about that. When you look at the sun, you're seeing a star that's 150 million kilometers away, yet from that distance, it will blind you if you stare at it. It will burn your skin. I can feel the warmth of the star, the sun, the star, on my face from that distance. Really an incredible feat to consider the energy that the star our sun is putting out. It has other interesting characteristics. Uh, the surface of the sun is around 6,000 degrees, which seems low when you really think about the, you know, a star, you think, oh, there must be millions of degrees. The core of the star, though, is 15 million degrees. Now, that energy is uh, developed through a process called nuclear fusion. So the stars that we see at night are predominantly hydrogen. This 75% uh, uh, hydrogen, about 25% helium. This, the hydrogen, because of the mass of the star, there's enough gravity that's been generated to cause these atoms to fall towards each other at great rates, with great force. Typically, uh, Hydrogen atoms, being positively charged, prefer to repel from each other. But under the incredible pressure of gravity in the core of a star, they don't repel, they actually fuse. And when you have two hydrogen atoms fusing together, the result is helium. And of course, is it a coincidence that helios, the Greek word for sun, is the derivative of the second element on the periodic table, helium? No, that's not a coincidence. Stars make helium out of hydrogen. And in that process of uh, doing so, it generates enormous amounts of energy. There's uh, copious amounts of energy. And the, the, the complexity of the hydrogen fusion reaction far exceeds elementary, middle school, high school physics. It's, it's a level of understanding that goes very, very deep. So I'm quite satisfied with explaining that really it is two hydrogen atoms coming together under the pressure of the, of the gravity of the sun to form helium, and in doing so, producing this energy that we see as light and heat. But of course, nuclear fusion is a very, very complex thing. It's something that we haven't been able to achieve here on Earth. If we ever do, we'll have an unlimited supply of energy. But uh, until that happens, we're gonna have to stick with uh, <laughs> our tra more traditional forms of energy. But the sun is really a remarkable thing. It's 99% of the mass of the entire solar system. Every planet, every moon, every comet, every asteroid, every meteor could all fit easily inside of the ball of the sun. It takes fully 111 Earths to cover the, <laughs> the surface of the face of the of the sun. And what's remarkable about uh, the alignment of the, uh, the geometry, if you will, of the solar system is that the moon is actually 400 times closer to the sun, but, it's, uh, but the sun is 400 times bigger. But because of this interesting mm, property, the, the size of the moon in the sky is the same as the size of the sun and therefore can completely cover it. And this is how we get lunar eclipses. Uh, so, sorry, uh, solar eclipses. <laughs> See, we all make mistakes. And that's okay, as long as you correct them. <laughs>
but the, the moon is 400 times smaller, but it's 400 times closer, and therefore they're the same size. And a solar eclipse, they match perfectly. So this is a good place to start with the, with the solar system, just to understand a few of these things about the sun. And um, I encourage you to consider other ways you could research more about it and get your students to dig deeper into understanding nuclear fusion and the different layers and the core of the star and exactly what a star is.